Now that we've set up the scene, created a first person character, and created a new item type, let's go ahead and add an item to the character. This video is just going to be an overview of how to add any type of item to the character. I'm going to be adding an assault rifle, but the same steps will apply whether you're adding an assault rifle, a sword, a shield, a magic item, whatever. This is just kind of a general overview. There's a different video that kind of gets into the specifics of how to configure that particular type of item. So let's go ahead and open up the item manager and this is under the tools menu and we'll just go through the options. So the first one is the name of the item and we want it to be called my assault rifle. And the item definition, we should assign the item type that we created to this field. The reason why it's called item definition and not item type is because the same base class is shared between the character controller and inventory system asset and this just allows for a seamless integration between the two different assets. In this case, for these videos that are specific on the character controller, anywhere that you see item definition, you can just replace in your head with item type. So we are assigning the item type to the item definition field. The character specifies the field that, or specifies the character that we want to add the item to. We want to add it to the first person character that we created earlier. And we want to add it to the default loadout just so that when the game starts, the character will equip that item. The animator ID, animator item ID is an important concept. And this just allows the animator to recognize what item it should play the animations for. So this should be a unique ID for that animator. We can find this animator ID in a few different ways, but one of the ways is by actually looking at the animator and seeing what the ID should be. So this is the character's uh, animator controller. And let's go to the upper body layer. And we'll see that there are a whole bunch of different substates here. Let's go into the assault rifle substate. And we'll, we can pick any of these transitions, but let's pick the equip from aim transition and we can look at the conditions and one of the conditions is the slot zero item ID equals one. This one value is the unique ID for the assault rifle in our animator. And so because of that, we want to transfer that one value over to the animator ID. If you're creating your own animator, which I highly recommend, and adding your own animations, your own items, you can have any sort of numbering scheme for this animator ID, and you could have your own, uh, whatever weapon you're adding could, could have a value of one as well. This unique, this uh, one value is just unique to this specific animator controller. Another way you can find out which value to use for the animator ID, if you want to use an, uh, an ID from the demo scene is to look at the documentation. There is a de default parameters uh, page and that lists the animator IDs that we use for each type of item. One of the conditions is this slot zero item ID and the reason why it's slot zero is because we are going to be adding the character to the right hand. In the demo scene, the slot zero represents the right hand and slot one represents the left hand. And you'll see how we get to that just in a little bit. But slot zero item ID is important just because it's the, we're going to be equipping the right hand uh, with the assault rifle. So that's why it's slot zero versus slot one. And then also why it uh, has an animator ID of one. So the next part is the first person part. And you can see that add first person item is already uh, selected and it's uh, disabled. That's because we created a first person character and so you have to add a first person item. First person base is the base object that the item should use uh, to represent like the arms in this case. And this, arm, this base object we created in the last video and that's right here. It's just the separate arms mesh. And the only difference is that I added a material to the mesh so that it's not just completely white. Um, but the assault rifle will be an independent object from these arms and that allows us to add any type of item to the arms. So we could have an assault rifle or a shield or a sword and use the same arms mesh. 
there are some first person configurations where the item or the weapon is attached to the arms and in that case you just want to specify a base class you do not want to specify a base uh, visible item or you do not want to specify a visible item you just want to specify a base object and that will just allow you to have different arms for uh, the different item types um, without switching out the actual independent uh, visible item so that may have been a little bit confusing but if your arms are attached to the weapon just use the base object if your weapon is detached from the arms you'll want to specify the visible item so let's because our arms are detached from the visible item let's go ahead and specify the visible item and we want to add the assault rifle so I'm doing a search for assault rifle and here's the actual model file for that assault rifle which we want to attach to the character's right hand so we'll just drag that in and you'll see that we get a few more options and this item parent field specifies what game object the assault rifle should be parented to and we want to parent it to the character's right hand so let's go to the first person objects and then the first person arms and we'll find the right hand keep expanding so there's the right hand and we'll just drag that in I expanded the right hand a little, uh, one more than I necessarily needed to because as soon as I hit this button we are going to see a new game object created right around in that location and that is what the slot is used for or specifies the slot that we saw earlier in the animator so let me hit add item slot and we can see this items game object was created and it has a slot ID of zero this slot ID of zero matches this transition slot IZ slot zero item ID so because the assault rifle is being added to the the zero slot on the um, under the character the zero slot that's why we wanted to use the slot zero item ID parameter so that's how the, that connection is made this animator controller field allows us to specify an animator controller for the assault rifle in this case this will allow the trigger to be pulled or the uh, the item to be uh, or the animator I mean sorry for the assault rifle to actually be shot um, and this this is specific for that assault rifle um, in most cases you'll have an animator for uh, shootable weapons but you won't necessarily have an animator controller for uh, something like melee weapons this third person uh, option allows us to add a third person item to the character's right hand in this case because we are not using this character for AI or multiplayer we just want to deselect that option we don't want to add a third person object if we added a third person object it would be kind of just like an invisible floating object because the character has no hands in this third person view so let's just deselect that the action type is shootable weapon because we want to add an assault rifle versus something like a melee weapon and the consumable item definition or consumable item type is the my assault rifle bullet which is what we had created earlier we can leave state configuration and profile at their default values uh, and there's a different video that kind of goes through setting this up but we'll just leave it at default so that we can configure everything uh, as is so let's hit build item and let's actually let's move the camera view so we can see the assault rifle will now be parented to the right hand after we hit build item so there we go so we have a basic item created let's go ahead and hit play and we should see the item being equipped and it's probably in the wrong position yeah it's in the wrong position but we got to start um, we can see the the animator is playing the correct animations for the assault rifle and that is because of that animator ID of one so if we go to um, the arms layer in this case we can see that it's currently in an aim state so for the assault rifle so that's looking good um, what's not looking good obviously is the position of the assault rifle and then also the position of the arms and these are two modifications that we can make pretty easily so let's start with positioning the assault rifle 
And to do this, you'll want to click on your visible item, which is the item that's underneath this hierarchy, and just hit pause. And you'll now want to reposition it within the game view so that it it's positioned correctly. And I'm not going to be able to get it perfect. Um, but this is, this is close enough for the most part. So, so that, okay, that, that looks good for now. So let's just go ahead and copy this component, the transform. We'll stop playing and then we'll just paste these component values. And now when I play again, we should see that the assault rifle is positioned where it was before. So that looks good. Now it's just the arms that we need to reposition. And we can do that through by clicking on the assault rifle that we created under the items uh, game object. And we'll scroll down to the first person perspective item. And we can adjust this position spring. And this will adjust where the assault rifle is located, or the arms are located. So we'll move that back a little bit. And this, let's see, let's move the X a little bit as well. I'm doing a terrible job at positioning this. So in this case, um, instead of spending time trying to get the exact perfect values, I'm going to cheat. Um, well, after I get my perfect values in the game view, I'm going to want to copy the, these values um, using probably, I mean, a screenshot tool is the easiest way just to copy these values and stop playing and then set the values to whatever were the good values. And in this case, I'm going to look at the demo scene in a different project and just copy those values because I know those are correct. So I'm going to set these. And the exit offset is the location that the assault rifle should move to when you are unequipping. And so we want to move it lower a little bit. So that's the position. And then the rotation has a different set of values that I'm also going to cheat on. But that one's a little bit easier in that it's the exact same value. So perfect. So now when I hit play, we should see that the assault rifle is positioned correctly with the arms. The one problem is you'll notice in the game view, it looks like I'm actually missing some arms, whereas in the scene view, the arms exist. The reason for this is because the render bounds are set incorrectly. And you can see that the left armor in this case has a render bound, the rendering box is way over here. So let me move that rendering box. I can go to edit bounds and I'll just start modifying it to, to fit the location. And you can do this in the uh, while the game is playing, but remember you'll need to copy those values back. So, so that's the reason why that those um, that mesh had disappeared. So make sure you set the correct render bounds for your your mesh so that when it appears um, it will or when the item is equipped you'll actually see the mesh as well. So that's kind of just a basic overview on how to equip any type of item. I'll get into the specifics later on how to actually configure the assault rifle to shoot or to, to reload.